Neighborhood Church creates and grows an inclusive community of faith connected by love, spirit, and service. We acknowledge our presence on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Gabrieleno, oh, Gabrieleno, uh, Tongva peoples, the traditional caretakers of the lands and waters in this campus. With respect for the rights and wisdom of indigenous people, we acknowledge our harmful colonial histories and commit to decolonizing our own practices, to learning new ways of being in community and with each other in good relationship with the indigenous people of this land and with the land itself. Today's service is led by senior minister, Reverend, Reverend Dr. Omega Burkhart. Music is led by our music director, Dr. Zaneda Robles, with associate music director, Wells Lang, and the Neighborhood Bell Chorus, directed by Thomas Simpson. Please take a moment to silence your devices as we begin our service. Families with young children are always welcome in the sanctuary, and there is additional seating in the entry foyer or the narthex. I have three announcements. After today's service, join us at the first ever Neighborhood Death Cafe. A death cafe is a group-directed discussion of death with no agenda, objectives, or themes. It's a discussion group rather than grief support or counseling session. We'll meet in the Neighborhood House living room after service. Join us for coffee, tea, snacks, and of course, conversation. And Jenny says, yes, there will be cake <laughs> and gluten-free cookies. Neighborhood Young Adults Group, the 20s and 30s, will be hosting pumpkin carving and gourd painting on the picnic tables in the fenced courtyard today after service. All ages are welcome. Get ready for Drag Queen Bingo. November 2nd, this is a family-friendly event. All are welcome. Tickets are $20 for adults, $10 for youth, 17 and under. To purchase tickets and view event details, see the link in this week's newsletter or contact Taylor Chasen. Yay. More extensive announcements as well as our order of service this morning are available as a link in the Sunday email. Our order of service is visible online by scanning the QR code on the back of your hymnal with your phone, of course. Again, welcome to Neighborhood Church. Whoever you are, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, welcome to this inclusive faith community connected by love, spirit, and service.
Recuérdame, hoy me tengo que ir, mi amor. Recuérdame, no llores, por favor. Te llevo en mi corazón y cerca me tendrás. A solas yo te cantaré, soñando en regresar. Recuérdame. These are the words of the beautiful prelude Wells just played for us. Remember me. Today I have to leave my love. Remember me, but don't cry, please. I will carry you in my heart and close. You will always have me, and when we're alone, I will sing to you, dreaming about returning. Remember me. The veil thins this time of year. The sheer barrier lifts. We honor our ancestors in many ways through rituals that evoke their spirits. Whether these rituals are through creating a special altar for Dia de los Muertos or Dia de los Angelitos, through practices associated with Samhain, celebration of All Saints Day, or through the celebration and the casting out of evil spirits and ghosts during Halloween. Today in this space, we honor the lineage through symbolism in some of these rituals. Today we honor song, and we honor invocation, and we honor chants, and bells, and spells, Today we honor alchemy and mystery and strength of spirit. Spirit of life, spirit of life, we light this chalice made of oil and metal, not a cauldron, but a cup that contains within it that divine spark of each person's soul. It is the spark, it is the flame of our beloved community. So come, let us worship together today. I invite you to center yourself in your arrival this morning, a brisk for Los Angeles morning. We breathe in and we breathe out. I invite you to take a few moments to honor how and what you may be feeling in your bodies. Perhaps you would like to close your eyes, but you don't have to. How do the tips of your toes touch the earth? How do your knees bend, those of you who are seated? What does your chair or pew feel like? What wisdom does your gut offer to you this morning? And your heart? How are your shoulders connected this morning to your back and your neck? What do your facial muscles have to say to you today. What does the top of your head feel like as it touches the air? I invite you into a moment of shared silence.
Now I invite you to gather back, feel the top of your head, your face, your neck, how it connects to your spine. Notice your heart and your stomach, your seat and your bent knees and your ankles connected to your feet, firmly rooted in the earth. We have arrived this morning. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing our opening hymn number 1055, How Sweet the Darkness. Good morning. I'm Hannah Peterson. I'm your spiritual exploration assistant. I would like to invite all the children and youth to come up. Teenagers, this means you in the back. I know you're there. <laughs> it is a time for all the ages. Still part of that youth category. Fantastic. Well, I'm so glad that all of you are here today, and it's really fun to look around and see some folks in costumes. It's pretty cool. If somebody's sitting in front of you with a really tall witch's hat or bunny ears, <laughs> today you can lean to the side a little bit. Before we get started, we're going to have a story for all ages, and then we're going to have a parade in just a minute. But before we get started, I wanted to talk with you just for a few minutes about the departure of somebody who's been very special and important in our church. Many of you know who Matt Vasco is. He, some of you were um, students of his, or he worked with your teachers, or he read a story to you every weekend. And we're very sad. Matt isn't going to be part of our congregation for a little while. So he's not going to work here anymore. Yeah, do you have a question? My mom knows him. Your mom knows him. Yeah, lots of our adults and our kids here know him. And we're so grateful for everything that he has done. Sometimes when grown-ups 
have jobs, they switch jobs. And so Matt is, that's right. That's right, he has family that goes here too. So he's not gonna work here for a little while. And maybe we'll see Matt again in the future at another point. But we wanted to take just a moment to honor that sometimes when people, important adults, aren't in our lives, it can make us feel kind of sad. And sometimes I feel kind of sad. And when we're sad, then sometimes we remember that there are other times in our lives when we are sad. It makes us think of those times too. And to feel sad is okay. It's really important for you all to know that you can always talk to the important adults in your life, your moms and your dads and other adults who take care of you and your teachers here and me and Hannah, that we're here for you and we're here for the teachers too. We're really happy to have this growing and vibrant community of families and kids here and we are grateful for Matt for growing that. So sometimes we can have two conflicting emotions at the same time. We can feel sadness and also we can feel gratitude. Right? We can feel happiness for what they have done. So I thought we might take a minute to say thank you. Now, I, we can say words like thank you. Can anybody think of another way to say thank you without using the specific words thank you? What do you think? Um, I'm, grateful. I'm grateful. That's a great way to describe it. I'm grateful. That's right. Can you have grateful and, and uh, yes, let's have some gratefulness. Yeah, for sure. We can say it in different languages. We can say gracias in Spanish. Some of you know that word, right? Gracias. We can say it in French, merci. Right? Let's all practice saying gracias. gracias. Merci. merci. We can even sometimes say it without using words at all. Maybe we want to use our hands and we say thank you. So we can say thank you. Or thank you, you wanna try that? Thank you. We are grateful for the work that Matt has done here and we look forward to seeing him and his family in the future. It's important to know that nobody here did anything wrong and then when they decide to come back, we are gonna welcome them back with lots of love and joy. Yeah, I know, we can clap for that. That's right. Okay, so we're gonna hear a story. Is everybody ready for a story? Yeah. Yes, and then we're gonna have a parade. Well, our story today is the ofrenda that we built. This is the ofrenda that we built. This is the cloth embroidered by Ama that covers the ofrenda that we built. Yes. This is the papal, cut with designs, that graces the cloth with the ornate flowing lines that covers the ofrenda that we built. These are the candles, glowing and bright, that welcome our ancestors in from the night and shine on the papal that graces the cloth that covers the ofrenda that we built. These are the sugar skulls, smiling sweetly, that represent joy and how full life can be, and rest by the candles that shine of the papel, that graces the cloth that covers the ofrenda that we built. This is the copal, made out of sap, that urges each spirit to wake from their nap, and burns by the skulls, that rests by the candles, that shine on the papal, that graces the cloth, that covers the ofrenda that we built. This is the bell that our whole family rings, loved for the sound and the spirit, spirits it brings, that chimes near the copal, that burns by the skulls, that rests by the candles, that shine on the papel, that graces the cloth that covers the ofrenda that we built.
These are the petals, yellow and gold, that gather our ancestors in from the cold. And circa the bell that chimes near the copal, that burns by the skulls, that rests by the candles, that shine on the papel, that graces the cloth, that covers the ofrenda that we built. These are the tamales, warm masa and meat, that Papi prepares for the spirits to eat, and serves on the plate on top of the petals that circle a bell made out of metal, that chimes near the copal, that burns by the skulls, that rests by the candles, that shine on the papal, that graces the cloth that covers the ofrenda that we built. This is the sweetbread, fluffy and round, a symbol of life and death so closely bound, placed by tamales, filled with rich meat, as offerings for food for the spirits to eat that wait on the plate on top of the petals, that circle the bell made out of metal, that chimes near the copal, that burns by the skulls, that rests by the candles, that shine on the papal, that graces the cloth, that covers the ofrenda that we built. This is the water, sparkling clear, that quenches the thirst of all who draw near, and rests by the bread, sugary and sweet, beside the tamales filled with rich meat, that wait on the plate on top of the petals that circle the bell made out of metal, that chimes near the copal, that burns by the skulls, that rests by the candles, that shine on the papal, that, you wanna say it with me? That graces the cloth, that covers the ofrenda that we built. And these are the photos, reminders so dear, of our loving abuelo, who's no longer here. Each year on this day, the day of the dead, we offer our loved ones tamales and bread. We play music he liked and share things we remember. We honor him today and every November and hope that he visits the family ofrenda that together we built. The end. All right, well, I'm going to extend the invitation to anyone who dressed up today, if you'd like to come be a part of our costume parade. I think we'd all like to see each other's costumes. It's very fun. So we're gonna go around twice the sanctuary, and the second time, all the kids are gonna go out to the um, narthex, because we're gonna do a craft. It's gonna be really fun. Wells, would you accompany us with some spooky music?
That was fun. <laughs> Each Sunday, our congregation dedicates 100% of its contributions to 501c3 organizations or neighborhood church-based social justice activities that are making a difference in our community and in the world. Each selected guest organization aligns with our community's mission and values and is nominated by church members who are often longtime volunteers and supporters of these change-making organizations. You can donate in two ways. You can use your cell phone to donate by texting the number on the screen over there. Or if you'd prefer to donate in person, you can put your donation in one of the designated boxes during the music or after the service. There's a donation box here in front, over here, and in the narthex, and one behind the center row. You may rise during the music to put your donation in the box if you wish, and please extend those around you who may need assistance in reaching the donation boxes. If you wish to make a payment towards your pledge or contribute to church operations, make a note in the subject line or use an envelope that's available at the donation boxes. This week, our gifts will support Team Lucas, an important charity of this uh, church. Here with some more information is Taylor Chasen. Good morning. Next Saturday, November 2nd, Team Lucas will once again participate in the Out of the Darkness Walk to benefit the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Lucas Pender was a beloved neighborhood senior high youth group member who touched many lives. Lucas was a remarkable soul who filled the world with creativity through his art, music, and writing. In youth group discussions, he never hesitated to question the status quo and champion social justice, always pushing for a better world. Tragically, we lost Lucas to suicide in 2012 during his time with our youth group. His favorite color was purple, which is why you'll see our team wearing purple at this year's Out of the Darkness Walk. His mother, Susan, became a powerful advocate for suicide prevention after losing her youngest son, dedicating herself to this cause until she passed away in 2022. Their story reminds us of why we walk, because talk saves lives and mental health care is health care. Next Saturday, we'll start from Central Park in Pasadena, walking down Colorado Boulevard to Lake and back. Our goal is to have 20 team members and raise $3,500 for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. The funds we raise are vital. They support new research, educational programs, and advocacy efforts. AFSP was instrumental in establishing the National 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, making help more accessible to those in crisis, but there's still so much work to be done. Suicide is something no family, church, or community should ever have to experience. When you donate to Team Lucas, you're not just supporting a walk, you're investing in prevention, education, and support for survivors. You're helping create the brighter future that Lucas believed in so passionately. Lucas believed in the power of action to create change. Today, we have the opportunity to honor his memory and create lasting change by supporting AFSP's mission. Will you join us in walking out of the darkness and into a brighter tomorrow? Whether you can join us on November 2nd with your family, and yes, dogs and strollers are welcome, or support us through a donation, every contribution matters. Together, we can build a world where fewer families experience this profound loss. Together, we can make a difference. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving genera generously.
Our reading this morning is a hymn. It is a song in the form of a poem to Ninkasi. Born of the flowing water, tenderly cared for by the Ninursag, born of the flowing water, tenderly cared for by the Ninursag. Having founded your town by the sacred lake, she finished its great walls for you. Ninkasi, having founded your town by the sacred lake, she finished its walls for you. Your father is Enki, Lord Didimud. Your mother is Ninti, the queen of the sacred lake. Ninkasi, your father is Enki, Lord Ninimud. Your mother is Ninti, the queen of this sacred lake. You are the one who handles the dough and with a big shovel, mixing it in a pit, the bapir with the sweet aromatics. Nenkasi, you are the one who handles the dough and with a big shovel, mixing it in a pit, the bapir with date and honey. You are the one who bakes the bapir in a great oven, puts it in a pile of hulled grains. Nenkasi, you are the one who bakes the bapir in a big oven, puts in order the piles of hulled grains. You are the one who waters the malt set on the ground. The noble dogs keep away even the potentates. Ninkasi, you are the one who waters the malt set in the ground. The noble dogs keep away even the potentates. You are the one who soaks the malt in a jar. The waves rise, the waves fall, Ninkasi, you are the one who soaks the malt in a jar. The waves rise, the waves fall. You are the one who spreads the cooked mash on large reed mats. Coolness overcomes, Ninkasi, you are the one who spreads the cooked mash on large reed mats. Coolness overcomes. You are the one who holds with both hands the great sweet wort, brewing it with honey and wine. You, the sweet wort, to the vessel, Ninkasi. You move the sweet wort to the vessel. The filtering vat which makes a pleasant sound, you place appropriately on a large collector vat, Ninkasi. The filtering vat, which makes a pleasant sound, you place appropriately on a collector vat. When you pour out the filtered beer of the collectored vat, it is like the onrush of the Tigris and Euphrates. Ninkasi, you are the one who pours out that filtered beer of the collector vat. It is like the onrush of the Tigris and Euphrates. Thus ends our reading this morning.
At its most literal meaning, the flaming chalice signals Unitarian Universalist identity, writes Susan Ritchie. But it has other registers of meaning as well. It suggests the transformations that take place when we are held within religious community. When we light the chalice in worship, we illuminate a world that we feel called upon to serve with love and a sense of justice. We also, excuse me, we also often light the chalice whenever we gather, be it at our worship services or committee meetings or board retreats. We appreciate the reminder that even the most basic work serves the larger mission. In its setting in worship, she goes on to write, lighting the chalice signals the entry of the gathered community into a sacred space. As a minister, when I light the flame, I like to think of the thousand or more congregations doing so at the same time. This helps me enter into the spirit of worship, which is intended to break down apparent barriers of time and place so that we, the congregation, can establish larger connections to the sacred and to all the other people of liberal religious faith who are gathering in the present, have gathered in the past, and who will gather in the future. The rhythms and concerns of our everyday life remain, but they come to be held in a much larger context. This transformative power of flame and oil, a vessel that contains a substance that is transmuted oil and wick and connection and vice versa connection to oil and wick. Our community is linked with others around the globe, also in community. We are invoking the spark of energy that is made manifest by this tiny flame and sometimes a bit of smoke. It is an alchemical reaction when materials are made into other materials when the divine spark, as Emerson termed it, that divine spark that symbolizes and connects us all is lit. An alchemy that has always been at the heart of how we gather as humans and peoples of faith, no matter the tradition or time period. Double, double toil and trouble fire burn and cauldron bubble. The witch says, cool it with a baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. These lines from Macbeth, some of you were saying them with me. I can tell you had to do that in high school. (laughs) These lines from Shakespeare's Macbeth close the incantation between three witches. The somewhat ridiculous, but also very famous characterization of these women, outcasts from society, reciting an incantation over their cauldron in a cave far away, reflect the fear of women living out societies, outside of society's norms, and coincidentally set the stage, literally set the stage for hundreds of years of visual representations of 
witches <laughs> as chaotic, vaguely dangerous, scheming figures shadowed in the occult with their prophetic powers of divination. Now, during this time period in which Macbeth was written, women known as alewives were the only secular brewers of beer in Europe. Brewing was largely part of monastic life. It was really only done by single women or widows outside of the walls of convents in monasteries of Europe in the 1600s when Shakespeare wrote Macbeth. Women who used herbs and kept hidden recipes that invoked the spirits. They were envied for their freedom and also demonized for their independence. Witches who wore tall visible hats in busy town marketplaces became easy targets for a church structure that wanted to monopolize beer production. <laughs> double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, fillet of finny snake in the cauldron boil and bake, eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worms, sting lizard's leg and owlet's wing for a charm of powerful trouble like a hell broth, boil and bubble. It's rather dramatic, <laughs> talking about beer that way as a hell broth. <laughs> Boiling and bubbling in the cauldron. Now, the bubbling broth of the cauldron wasn't always considered hellish. In fact, the boiling and bubbling of fermentation was once linked directly to the Mesopotamian goddess Ninkasi. Goddess of water, Ninkasi. Goddess of brewing, goddess of beer. Ninkasi was invoked in the song in the hymn that I just read to her for our reading, it was likely sung in Sumerian as ancient brewers created their fermented beverages that were early predecessors to our modern understanding of beer. The text I read earlier, the hymn to Ninkasi, is thought to have been written down for the first time around 4,000 years ago. It is one of the first written recipes ever. The brewing methods that are described therein and the devotion to Ninkasi that is outlined in that hymn likely date many thousands of years before. At its heart, the hymn to Ninkasi is a recipe and an incantation. It is a spell for making the magic of fermentation happen from grain to wort to a fermented beverage made out of the grain-heavy bapir bread. Dates and honey are added to the mash along with water and wine, making a pleasant sound as it bubbles in the vat, as it ferments. A bubbling and boiling that wasn't hellish at all. You are the one Ninkasi who waters the malt set on the ground. The noble dogs keep away even the potentates. Ninkasi, you are the one that waters the malt set on the ground and soaks the malt in a jar. The waves rise and the waves fall. You are the one who spreads the cooked mash on large reed mats and coolness overcomes. You are the one who holds with both hands the great sweet wort brewing it with honey and wine, the filtering vat, which makes a pleasant sound. You place appropriately on a large collector vat, Ninkasi, that filtering vat, which makes a pleasant sound. The bubbling in the cauldron, fermentation of the sugars, of the grains, and the dates, and the honey, converting them to alcohol. A bubbling associated with divine spark, a spark bestowed by the goddess, 
an alchemical reaction of primary materials into spirit, into spirits, a recipe and an incantation. Double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Spirit of life, we light this chalice of oil and metal, not a cauldron but a cup that contains within it the divine spark of each person's soul that is the spark, that is the flame of our beloved community. Our chalice lighting from this morning, an incantation, yes, not a cauldron, but a cup that holds our intentions and our aspirations, a symbol that unites Unitarian Universalists around the world. The chalice of Unitarian Universalism was first devised by Reverend Charles Joy, a Unitarian minister who was serving as the director of the Unitarian Service Committee in Europe during the Second World War, helping people flee the Nazis. Reverend Joy asked Hans Deutsch, an artist, for help creating an official symbol of their work that would be recognizable to people and also to governments. Deutsch adapted an older visual symbol from Czechoslovakia that meant freedom and strength. The flaming chalice, a stylized cup holding a flame, metal, oil, wick, creating an alchemical reaction, a transmutation, not turning into gold or another precious metal, but rather turning into spirit, symbolizing love, community, and shared values, strength, and freedom. Writes Noreen Kimball, Unitarian Universalist religious educator, and I quote, one very old woman told how the flaming chalice of her homeland, Czechoslovakia, helped her while she was in a Nazi prison camp. Printed under the picture of the Czech flaming chalice was the motto, Pravda, Bitesi, which means in English, truth overcomes or truth prevails. Every single morning in that terrible camp, the old woman said she traced a picture of the flaming chalice in the sand with her finger. Then she wrote the motto underneath it. It gave me the strength to live each day, she later wrote. Whenever she drew the chalice in the dirt, she was reminded that someday the world would remember the important truth that every single person is important and should be free to think and believe as he or she chooses. An incantation, an aspiration, a spell. Nenkasi, you are the one who holds with both hands the great sweet wort, brewing it with honey and wine, the filtering vat which makes a pleasant sound. Ninkasi, goddess of unseen processes, turning water and grain into spirit and sustenance, fermentation that bubbles, reminding us that the song of your recipe, Ninkasi, is a tribute to community practice and shared experience, also to feminine power and divinity. Double, double toil and trouble witches who live outside of patriarchal religious structures, creating incantations over darkened cauldrons or medieval alewives onto which society's harsh expectations were placed. Fermentation of hell broth and charm that was probably also coincidentally beer. Alchemy of materials into expectations and the subversion of those expectations. A cup, not a cauldron, but a flaming cup of metal and fire, spirit of life, 
an incantation from the lips of an old woman in a prison camp while drawing in the dirt a flaming cup with the motto Pravda Vitesi. It gave me the strength to live each day, she said. So this, this season of honoring our ancestors, of celebrating the spirits and the spirit, when the darkness of night is lit by flames under cauldrons and flames of our chalices, let us also honor the spirit of transformation, the spirit of fermenting something new, the alchemy that changes our material world from what we can hold and what we can touch and see and feel, that changes it into a spirit that connects us all. The incantations we say for strength and for truth, for centering love, and for centering our aspiration to create a better world. May it be so. Please rise in body or in spirit and join us in singing our closing hymn, number 275, Joyful is the Dark. Double, double, we celebrate the fermentation bubble. The alchemy that changes metal and wick and oil into spirit. 
we will extinguish our chalice today, but not the flame that is the truth and the strength and the freedom of our community. Amen. <laughs>